daughter right there. All right, now before I start messing with y'all, this may be the most important thing I say all night. A lot of people work tirelessly to make this club awesome. Make some noise for your wait staff, your manager, your sound guy, your legal immigrants in the back. Goddamn right. <laughs> and don't forget to, to, to tip your servers. They're working hard for y'all tonight, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, make some noise for them. They are wonderful. We can't do it without them and without you guys, all right? Without you guys, we're just crazy people talking to ourselves, okay? And, and San Antonio, y'all have been wonderful. Like, I, I tell you, I tour the country performing comedy, and a lot of the times I perform for white, 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 white audiences. Right? It's just me and the kitchen staff. That's the brown people in the play. But not in San Antonio. Oh, hell no. Oh, I like it. Goddamn right. Like, I'm, my mother's from Bogota, Colombia, my father's Italian. Right? So I'm the kind of brown where white folks know I'm not white, but brown folks know I'm not a cop. Right? Like, is it real? Right? Like, you would ask me for drugs, sir, for sure. Right? No problem. <laughs> no, but I love you. Y'all look wonderful. My mother told me San Antonio was dope. And, and, and I gotta tell you, like, my mom, like, Dude, when I say, okay, my parents, I come from a crazy diverse family, all right? My mother, Bogota, Colombia, didn't come to this country until she was 21 years old. You guys ever watch Narcos on Netflix? Yeah. That was my mom's neighborhood. Overly excited, sir. <laughs> Seriously, my mom was walking a dog past Pablo Escobar's house when she was nine, you know? Like, my mom grew up in a tough time and a place. My mom grew up in a time and a place where her best friend got kidnapped by the cartel. My mother had to hit the streets like a badass little girl and find a new best friend. <laughs> Forget about Maria, she ain't never coming back to the bank. <laughs> Yo, but there were tricks, and some of, my, some of my Latinos will tell you, there are tricks to not get kidnapped. Like my abuela, like my grandma. She, she was a tough-ass woman, and she taught my mom, like, my mom would have to walk to school, like, she had a jacked-up left side, because my grandma used to say, the bigger the limp, the lower the ransom, right, y'all? White folks never heard that shit before, but some, some of you Latinos are like, fuck yeah, you get kidnapped, you act like a never believe it. Kidnappers give you a ride home, they gonna mess with that slobber, It's a lot of work. Right? My Latinos will tell you there's some tricks, man. Like my mom, if she kept her gang sentence, like my mom never, she never really shook her Columbia. Like I gave my mom my Netflix password and she watches human trafficking documentaries. Like she ain't got time for my stand-up. She's trying to start a business, right? Like, goddamn right. But my parents were very, very different. Like, my parents got divorced when I was real young, about five years old. You know, my, and I say, like, my dad's Italian. So my dad's like a white, white, white boy. All right? And we're not all equal in this world, okay? Like, don't, don't think that for a second. Some people run fast, other people jump high. My father was a dick. Woo! Oh, like, next level kind of shit. Seriously. Like, my, my dad never approved of me being a stand-up comedian. He thought it was below me. He thought I could do more with my life. He said, he would say till his dying day, it's bullshit that I'm a comedian, but at least I'm not in prison. Like, that's the ballpark he thinks this is in, okay? Right, but my mother was a good Hispanic, she is a good Hispanic mother, and she stood up for me. And she would say, your dad's an idiot. Prison will make you hilarious, boy. What is he talking about? You get a couple felonies, you get some jokes. My Latinas know, right? God damn right. But I wouldn't do well in the pokey. Like, I'm into face lotions and stretching. Like, I would not, I don't help you in prison, y'all. And I, and I talk about my father a lot. But, but my dad taught me, be who you are. Be true to yourself. Like, if you want to be a certain way, as long as you're not hurting anyone, go do it. Like, my dad loved being a dick. Like, he loved it. To his dying day, my dad died of lung cancer, and he would say that chemotherapy doesn't make me throw up, but your jokes do. Like, ooh. I know those are my feelings, but that's hilarious. Like, that's... I mean, he would do, like, my father, he would say the craziest things. I would go to check on him, 
And he'd be like, when you come to my house, you can't Tinder, you can't Bumble, you can't do, you can't get on Craigslist to get a girl, nothing. He's like, because what if she comes over and steals my stuff? And I don't know how y'all do in San Antonio, but if anyone in here has sex with me tonight, you can take anything you want from my father's living room. That's not stealing. That's not even close. That's reciprocation, right? Mom, Mark, that, that's... But, and, and I say this, like, and I mean it generally, when I started comedy, like my dad, he was a dick about my comedy. And I, I don't know what he would think of it now, but when I started comedy, I sucked. I mean, I sucked every penis, every way possible. <laughs> Sacred balls, you know what I'm saying? All the amenities. <laughs> Goddamn right. <laughs> but you work hard. <laughs> and you get better. <laughs> I'm not gonna suck no dick on this stage tonight, all right? Or well, y'all thinking some shit, thank God. No, last year, hand to God, I made all of my money off comedy, acting, and Airbnb being my apartment, all right? So I'm doing better, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, some of that was like a sadness golf clap, like, jeez. Do you guys know, have, it makes a noise if you've messed with Airbnb, if you know what Airbnb is. Oh my god, I'm about to educate you people. Oh my goodness, Airbnb is like Tinder for your apartment. Oh my god, you match people up to have sex in your bed all the time. Oh my god, Airbnb is amazing. Okay, and but this is the thing, I'm gonna give you guys tricks, alright? Because you don't have to accept everyone who Airbnb like who requests to stay at your place. You don't have to accept everyone. Like you gotta look people up. If someone's single, you gotta investigate them. You know, like, they, if they're single and they're climbing mountains and going to the beach and riding horses, they're gonna attract dirt near your apartment. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, I don't need that stress. No, no, no. I wanna see sadness in your eyes, right? I wanna see you win an award for employee of the month. Like, that ain't gonna attract dirt in my apartment, you know? <laughs> but couples, couples, man, couples, those are the ones you gotta look out for, right? Because you know they're gonna have sex in your place. All right, and my only criteria is, if you stay in my apartment, I don't want you doing anything for the first time. Fuck that, ladies and gentlemen. If they're gonna stick your thumb where it has never been, go to a goddamn Motel 6. It's acceptable behavior, it says it on the door. No, man, you don't want any man or woman losing their virginity in your apartment. Hell no. That's when tears happen, all right? Ain't enough sage in the world gonna burn out that shitty mojo. Nah, 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 honey. So, it's, so you gotta investigate. Like, how long have you guys been together? Oh, man, I already like the answer. It's so exhausting for you to even think about the answer. God, I want that. Come on. Give me an idea. Ballpark. That's it? Wow, like, like four months underwater, Jesus! Well, okay, new couple, four months, hell no. You do not want them to stay in your apartment. Hell no, because that's when you experiment with your body when you've been together four months. No, man, no experimentation in my book. At four months, a guy like him is gonna say, let's get some cocaine and dress up like Muppets. Like, fuck you!
from the bottom of my heart. It's very natural. If you rent my place and stay in my place and you have an orgasm on my sheet, that's natural. We've all done it. But if you're like squirting on the walls, you're a jerk. That's unsanitary. That's gross. You would squirt on the walls for months. Like, we've only been together four months. What the fuck she did? No. At 16 years, if he squirts something on the walls, she would say, clean it up, and I told you not to stick it there. <laughs> God damn right. God damn, how long have you two been together? You don't even want to answer. <laughs> Like nine years, yeah, there's some sadness in your eyes, and I like it. That's what you're looking for. Like, no messing around. And I do, I make a lot of jokes about Airbnb. I really do, but, but it, it's not all fun and games, okay? People steal all of my really nice towels that I stole from really nice hotels. Vicious <laughs> cycle, man. Oh. Like, if I would walk into my apartment with a black light, you know, like, like, they might not be seen, I would probably, I would probably start crying, all right? Like, <laughs> so it's not all fun and games, man. <sighs> but you do what you have to. And, and I preach this to people all the time. Like, if you have an idea, if you want to do something, go try. There's just so many people everywhere, like, you gotta do it. You gotta go try. But, if you listen to my advice, you can't worry about things like your credit score. All right, let me explain that to you. Okay, let me, okay, my credit score, like, I've given my life to you. And my credit score is currently so bad that if my credit score was your SAT score, none of you would get into the University of Puerto Rico. All right, like, <laughs> they're even powered that school right now, for those of you who didn't get that joke. Okay. No, but you gotta do. <laughs> you have to try it. It's like, it's even hard for me to date. Wait, look, I'm from LA. Like, I've basically been there my whole life. So, I date everything, all right? Like, it's, you know, my only criteria is you be interested. Like, that's literally it. And like, when someone dates me and they wanna get serious, I have to let them know I'm nothing more than a backup plan right now. But like, I'm a strong ass number two, okay? Like, I'm like the ITT tech of dating, right? You ain't gonna get your masters with me, but it's better than being alone, right? <laughs> like nobody plans for this shit, right? <laughs> and I do, I date, like, okay, being, like I grew up around brown, so I dated brown basically my whole life. You know, but I'm currently dating this white girl who's like white, 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 right? And I realize that y'all white folks, these white girls, you go from passive aggressive to murder quicker than any other race. There's no in between, right? There's no in between. Watching these shows like Snaps and shit, like what? No, man, my Latinas, y'all about assault and battery. I can deal with that shit. Oh, goddamn right. Send your man to the hospital once and you're like, tat, tat, tat. Right? Remind him who's boss. Come home and say, you're like, welcome home, Tati. Uh, I dare you to press charges. Like, oh, I love that shit. I love that shit. Oh, God. <laughs> so much. She's like, and like I say, she's a real white girl. And she's like, you know a lot of drug dealers. She's like, did you used to be a drug dealer? I didn't think about this. It's like, how many times do you have to hook someone up to be considered a drug dealer? Like, I don't you know, I'm just, you're all at a comedy club. You've all hooked someone up with something, all right? <laughs> but, 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 I, but I preach to people, do it, like, do what makes you happy. Because when I started comedy, like, I, like my, everything wasn't so fucked up in my life. Like, I, don't get me wrong. I'm getting better at comedy and things are getting better. But last year, the only acting role I booked was a Mexican janitor on NCIS, okay? So it's like, I got a ways to go. Okay? Yeah, it's a goddamn way it's a good show. Here, what? Get it! Get I think you dropped some evidence, Holmes. That was six years of acting school. Nothing? Nothing? Hector should still be on that goddamn show. 
And when I started comedy, though, like my credit wasn't always as screwed up as it is now. Like my favorite thing that ever happened to me when I did have good credit was I got a $3,100 fraudulent charge on my credit card from an Applebee's in Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, you're goddamn right. Brian Moreno knows how to party. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't know how you guys go to Applebee's, but that night I was firing off jalapeno fucking poppers at the hip. There was a white family of six trying to Jesus for the first time, still talking about that shit. Oh, that was an amazing night. I probably ordered an ice sculpture at Applebee's. Has anyone here ordered an ice sculpture at Applebee's? Oh, it's incredible. I made a fry guy quit. I probably got laid at the Applebee's. Oh my god. So I don't know how it is in San Antonio, but if I spend $3,100 at a club in LA, I might not even get a kiss good night. Okay? You spend $3,100 at an Applebee's in Maryville, Tennessee, you get married, you have kids, your wife is fucking you years later, talking about that amazing jalapeno popper filled dinner, right? Fuck! Some of you are not impressed with my ownership of a uh, Applebee's franchise, I can tell. <laughs> And, but, but and this is also where I think I, I get a lot, of the, the, a, lot, a lot of the stuff that I preach is because I did come up in such a diverse family. Like, I, I have an older brother who's gay, there's me and my younger sisters in escort. So we're all like really different, right? We're all trying things. Okay, now hold on. I don't know that for sure, but who's taking you to Dubai? And why do I not see any photos of this person, right? Like, come on. Let's, Whatever, she's gonna hate that joke too, okay, for those of you. But, but, I, but I learned, like, you, got, you gotta be true to who you are, and like, the, the ideas you have, and you gotta go try things, just because there's just so many people everywhere in the world, there's just so many people doing every job, everywhere, everything, like, when I was younger, you'd go to H&R Block to get your taxes done, be an older gentleman dressed in a suit, Right, he'd make you feel comfortable about the numbers that he puts in front of you. Last year I went, it was a dude named Chaz with meth scabs on his face. Right, like, don't scratch on my 1099s, Chaz. Right, like, what the... There's people everywhere doing everything. So if you have an idea, if you got something in your mind, you got to go try. And the thing that we don't learn until late in life, it doesn't matter what you do. As long as you're not hurting anyone, it doesn't matter. Like, don't you, like, as long as you're not hurting anyone, it doesn't matter. And a lot of people, we don't, we don't find this out until late in life. And, and I learned this from my older brother. Like, and, and when I say old, my older brother's gay, let me explain you homosexuality just a little bit, okay? There's a scale of homosexuality. There are dudes who are like, all, all dick, all the time, like that's it, right? Nothing more, nothing less. Like there's a, in Los Angeles, there's a, a parade they do every year. It's a gay pride parade. And there are dudes who literally dress up like the penis Grim Reaper. Right? Like a black, a black penis with a sickle, it's terrifying. <laughs> that's not my brother, okay? Like, okay? That's not him. My brother is like Neil Patrick Harris gay. Alright? Right? At first you don't know, and then later on you're like, fuck I know. Yeah, he's gay. Like, how did I not know? Like you totally. Like at 13 years old, my brother cried because the VCR didn't record the Tyra Bang show. Alright? Like I always knew, I just didn't know. And, and my brother being gay, that means I missed the gay bus by one chromosome, right? Let's call a spade a spade, y'all. Like, we all have spider senses. I know when there's a hot penis in the room. I don't want nothing to do with it, but I know it's there. That's confusing for everyone, okay? Like, that's why some of y'all, like, like, he's about to suck some dick, right? Like, no. My father was terrified I was going to come out of the closet and he was going to go two for two on gay son. That means he was doing gay shit himself. Whatever. It's another story. Yeah, that's, roll, that's, that's rolling the bad dice right there. Getting two gay son. Woo! But I learned from my brother, and I mean this seriously, like, you, you gotta do what makes you happy, as long as you're not hurting anyone. Like, the most my brother's homosexuality ever hurt anyone was when he came out of the closet, alright? It was Thanksgiving dinner, like, 13 years ago, it was like one of these long tables. It was like, neighbors, friends of family, friends of friends, like, people you don't even know, right? And food is getting served, my brother stands up, 
comes out of the closet. And everyone's like, shit, is this a tradition? Like, <laughs> like do we go or do we clap? Like, what, what do we do? What do we do? <laughs> and they couldn't get any more awkward. My brother looks around and he said, you guys all heard me right, I prefer peanuts. Now please pass the yam. <laughs> My father didn't eat a yam for the last 13 years of his life. And the yams were outlawed in the house. <laughs> but but, I, but that's what I learned. Like, do what makes you happy as long as you're not hurting anyone. And you can't get it confused, because like, sometimes we get it confused. Just because you don't like what someone's doing doesn't mean it's hurting. All right? And one of my friends got a very, very confused. He was dead serious. He said, since your older brother's gay, would you shower in a locker room with a man that you knew was gay? I said, yeah, dude, why not? He said, what if he runs up and rapes you? I thought about this for three weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Three weeks I thought about this every hour of the day, okay? And I have never one time ever seen a man run with an erection. Never one time. I watch a lot of pornography. I have never, ever seen that, right? Yeah, goddamn right. No, like I fooled it, sir. I tried it. You're goddamn right I tried it. You're goddamn right I get a crab walk. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'll show you guys. It's circulation. It's whatever. You get it. It's circulation. It's... <laughs> and Viagra and Cialis, they've been around forever, right? You think they would have done one commercial? Old guy crossing the finish line. Right? right? And everyone in the crowd's like, oh, he's still a wreck. Suck my pill. Nothing. And if you can run in the direction, you with the sunglasses, don't tell anyone, man. That's aggressive. <laughs> but more to the point, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in this room, if we're showering with some dude, and he starts to rape us, then none of us are going to care that he's gay. We're all going to be really pissed off he's a rapist. All right, you guys understand the difference? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and y'all in San Antonio, you have been awesome. Like the people here, and if it for the show tonight, I would be in a margarita coma right now. Like, you, yeah, you guys do margaritas and air conditioning exceptionally well in this town. Holy shit! I heard you do strip clubs really good too, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't go to strip. I, I used to be a DJ at a strip. Okay, look. When I, before I started comedy, I was the West Coast Public Relations Manager of the Wall Street Journal. Worse is what I do. Worse, like, I, I, but I hated my life. So I quit my job, and I started comedy, and my next job after that was being a DJ at a strip club, okay? Yeah, woo for you. <laughs> woo for you. Because I'm a germaphobe, ladies and gentlemen. That job was... Worst. And LA strip clubs are not good, alright? Don't think they are, okay? LA strip clubs are horrible, alright? And, 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 and they're horrible because if you're a stripper who can make any money, you just go to Vegas and make your money, alright? You don't stay in LA. And like the girls who work the LA clubs, they have, there's some of them that's in sunshine in eight years. Like that's really hard to do, okay? I mean, the DJ will come up like, Rah! and he plays fuck me, fuck me, fuck me by Prince. Like that's not a song. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean this sincerely. I learned this, and I mean it. I never want you guys to forget it. Strippers and comedians are doing a lot of the same stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We're on a stage in a dark room in front of a bunch of strangers. And strippers and comedians, if we can't get a response from the audience in a very short time, 
We have to be okay with prostitution out by the river to make some money, ladies and gentlemen, okay? So a few of you need to laugh like my lips depend on it because they literally do. Tough road, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tough fucking road. <laughs> but I love it, and I preach to people all the time. Do what makes you happy, because no one's gonna serve you up anything, man. No, like, and so much stuff like put, pushes us in so many different directions. You know, it's like growing up. Oh, okay, the one of the people who affected me the most was this fucking prick neighbor of mine. All right. Growing up, it was this dude named Jacob. He was my arch nemesis, right? Jacob was that dude at 13 years old, he had a full beard, right? And he had a penis till his knee. Uh, it was incredible, right? Like, but like he grew up, like his legs grew into his penis. It's not like that anymore. But that's not the point. I'll get to the point. <laughs> Jacob used to beat the shit out of me all the time. All the time. Jacob was this big dude. He'd be like, I'm bigger than you, and I'm better than you because I'm gifted. I'm so gifted because I'm born on Christmas. I got it, sir. I got it. Jacob would say, I'm gifted because I'm born on Christmas. All the time. I'm bigger than you. I'm better than you because I'm gifted. I'm gifted because I'm born on Christmas. What does that even mean? Jacob, right? I was telling my mom this story in a passing conversation. She's like, oh, honey, did you know that Jacob was adopted? <laughs> no, lady, I had no clue. I found Jacob on Facebook, and I sent him a message in very clear language explaining to Jacob that technically you are re-gifted. <laughs> I think I want Jacob. I think. Now, you. No, y'all have been goddamn right. Y'all, like, I'll tell that joke again if you want like that. I don't care about any of them. Alright, now you guys know I'm just a feature act. My name is Brian Marie.